So a lot of people are looking for a good supplement for a lot of things in the body to increase your health, to increase muscle, to increase lifespan, to increase energy. And everyone's looking, they go to Amazon and they go to typing, looking for a bunch of supplements. But I want to talk to you about one supplement, one that is going to help with a lot of benefits in a lot, in a wide variety of reasons, in a wide vari variety of functions. And I'm talking about creatine. Creatine is a very, very interesting supplement. And it's something that our body makes on its own. We need to consume also in our diet so we can maintain those normal levels in our body. If we don't consume it because we have a vegan or a vegetarian diet, then we're going to lack of enough creatine in our body. We're going to cause a nutritional deficiency. So we need to be aware of that. If you have a vegan or a vegetarian inclination for your food, then you need to be aware of this and you need to be taking creatine because you're not going to produce enough. What is creatine? Creatine has been probably the most studied supplement in all literature. So we know for sure how it works. We know if it's safe, we know if it's unsafe. We know all the things around the myths. Is it safe for the kidneys? Is, is it gonna uh, make me lose my hair? And all those things. So creatine, uh, when we break it down, what we see in the biochemistry, what is it? Let's remember that there are things in our body called amino acids. Amino acids are like little building blocks. We have 20 different types of amino acids in which nine are essential and 11 are not essential. When we have little chains of amino acids, that's called a nitrogenous organic compound. If I make a bigger chain, it's called a peptide. And if I make a much bigger chain, more than 50, and I get two chains and I get them twisted in different forms, that's called a protein. What is creatine? Well, creatine is a nitrogenous organic compound. It's a little chain made from three amino acids, which is methionine, arginine, and glycine. And remember that glycine is very important, for instance, for collagen. Glycine makes one third of collagen. So creatine, glycine, it's also very important for making creatine. Creatine, it's made naturally and it occurs naturally in our body. It's made primarily in our liver, but also our brain can make its own creatine. But we need to be taking also creatine from our diet. We need in about for one to three grams minimum in our diet enough to be having normal functions in our body. How does creatine work? Let's remember that inside of our cells, we have something called the mitochondria. And the mitochondria, it's currency, it's ATP. It takes oxygen and glucose, it brings it inside of the, of the mitochondria, and then the byproduct, the currency for that, for energy production is called ATP. The T, it, it's called adenosyl triphosphate. Tri, it's a three phosphate groups. So when, when ATP is working, it starts losing those phosphate groups. So if I go from ATP, then I'm going to go to ADP, which is diphosphate, and they to AMP, which is mono, which is one. That process, in order to come back and produce more energy, it needs to recycle that phosphate. In that process, creatine makes it that process faster. So in order to recycle creatine, I'm going to bring that currency of the cell even faster. So I'm going to be more efficient in my energy production. But first, let's go for the myths and for all the lies and for all the doubts and for all those things that are on social media or if you go in the computer and you start looking like, oh my God, what is, what is people saying about creatine? Well, let's go. So creatine is not a steroid. People think that creatine is maybe like something. People go in the gyms, they're in the back and they're going to start injecting to just get super big and huge. No, creatine, again, it's just three amino acids in a little chain and it's going to help for different functions. Steroids are something different. Steroid, steroids are hormones like testosterone, like cortisol, like, like estradiol. It's completely different. That creatine might be harmful for your kidneys and no. And this is a big no. And I still see physicians and I still see nutritionists and I see, still see health enthusiasts on social media saying that it could be dangerous for your kidneys. And no, the answer is no. And there's enough evidence showing that it's not harmful at all. Why? And where is the misconception? We have creatine. Creatine converts 
into creatinine. Creatinine, it's a byproduct of the production of creatine and creatinine, it's produced by the muscle, it's produced by the byproduct of creatine and it goes to the kidney and it needs to be eliminated all through the kidney. The kidney has the capacity of just flushing all the creatinine that we have in our blood. What happens if I'm taking creatine and my creatinine levels get a little high? Well, it means that you're, as you're producing more, it's just taking a little bit more of time of that creatinine to get flushed. But it doesn't mean that your kidney isn't working well. And it's been widely shown that during the phase in which you're taking creatine, it doesn't mean that you have an altered function and that once you quit creatine or if you stop taking it for a while, in a couple of days, your levels of creatinine are going to be completely normal. Another myth is that creatine is just for bodybuilders. No, it's not just for bodybuilders. That it's just for men. No, it's not just for men. That I'm going to look like a man. Like I'm going to grow if you're a woman and I don't want to be taking it but because maybe my muscles are going to grow like men. No, that doesn't happen taking creatine or taking anything else. Is it going to make me fat? No, it's not going to make you fat. Is it going to make me retain water? Yeah, it's going to make you retain water at the beginning. But just at the beginning, it's just going to be for maybe 20 days or maybe for a month because your muscle is going to be taking more water. So you're going to feel like you're a little bigger. You're going to be looking a little bit more muscular, but less defined. For how long can I take creatine? Well, the best thing is when you take it every single day, even if you train or not every single day for months or even years. I've been taking creatine probably for two years. So now that we've talked about the myths, let's go and see how it really works, which are all the functions about creatine. So first, it's gonna make you stronger. And strength is something that we need to be taking care of during all of our lives. We need to be taking care of our strength because the loss of strength, the loss of ability, not just the, the loss of muscle mass, it's also muscle mass plus strength. Some people, they're not the biggest, but they have a lot of strength. Let's remember Bruce Lee. He wasn't the biggest guy, but he was very strong. But it also helps in, in endurance. It helps with recovery. Recovery from lifting weights or from running, from jogging, from swimming, from being on a bike, from whatever. Elite athletes use creatine and it's very, very safe and they use it to get more strength more stamina and better recovery. It has also been shown that it stops memory loss and it stops cognitive decline. If you haven't seen our video on cognitive decline, I, I wanna encourage you to go and see it because it's, it has been seen by a lot of people. But it, creatine has been shown to stop cognitive decline and there are more studies every day coming showing these. It has also been shown to have antidepressant effect. But also because exercise by itself has antidepressant effects, but just creatine by itself, it's been studied that it could help or, or it could aim in a way for depression. There are also studies showing that it could help aiming the production of collagen. You're like, collagen? What does it has to do with collagen? Well, do you remember that I told you that it has three amino acids and one of those is glycine? Again, glycine makes one third of collagen. So if I'm taking creatine and it has a lot of glycine, if I have a lot of glycine in my bloodstream, is that going to work to help me build collagen? Yeah, for sure. It, it could. It doesn't mean that it's going to necessarily go there because glycine has a bunch of functions. One of them is creatine, one of them is collagen, but it has a different variety of functions. It is shown to help with osteoporosis or osteopenia. So if you want to get your bone density better, creatine is definitely something that is going to help. It also helps for people not to lose muscle mass, something called sarcopenia. And this is something that it's really sad that we're seeing today as physicians that most of the people they lose muscle mass every single day but people which are very young and this is going to cause a bunch of chronic conditions related with brain health related with metabolic cardiovascular health with articular health and with a lot of different reasons in which muscle, it's a very interesting organ. Okay, so having said this, we're gonna go for the last myth. I don't wanna take creatine because it's gonna make me lose my hair. And no, that's why Dr. Carlos has no hair at all. No, I lost my hair because 
everyone in my family, we're all, all bald. What's the deal with creatine? Well, the deal is this. Testosterone has a form which is 10 times stronger, which is called DHT, the hydrotestosterone. DHT works in all of the body, but it also is a reason, and it only works here, like in the crown area. It doesn't work here. That's why we lose hair in this area and not in this one. So can creatine increase the levels of DHT? Yeah, it can, but it increases DHT in the normal range, physiological range. So which is the best way of taking creatine? So the best way and the one you're gonna find more way if you go on your computer is gonna be creatine monohydrate. Don't go for the rest. The rest have been studied and they're not better. They're more expensive. How much should you, should you take? You should be taking around 0.1 milligrams per kilogram of body weight. What does that mean? If I'm if my weight is 80, then I'm going to be taking 8 grams. So remember guys, creatine is something very safe. It's the most studied supplement and you can consume it if you want. There are a bunch of different reasons why you should be consuming it or why you could be consuming it and again let me know in the comments if you haven't consumed it at all how have been your results by taking it and please remember before you leave that the best way to support us is very easy it's just by clicking the like button please remember to subscribe and to hit the bell so every time that we make new videos you're going to be the first one to be notified see you guys and see you next time